Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast. The Life is Good trademark was started by brothers Albert and John Jacobs, but the trademark was rejected several times by the trademark office before they finally obtained their trademark. In this podcast, we are going to explore how to use a trademark on clothing brands so that it will be accepted by the trademark office, hopefully on the first try. I'm Wayne Carroll, your host, here to share valuable insights, stories, and strategies for succeeding in intellectual property. Let's dive into the game of IP and learn how to win. This podcast is not legal advice, but is strictly educational and informational. Listening to this podcast or reading show notes does not establish an attorney-client relationship. In 1994, Albert and John Jacobs, brothers, started a clothing brand called Life is Good. They had started this clothing brand and it was, you know, very much their selling out of the back of a van, going on road trips, going to street fairs. And they finally happened upon a brand that just started selling out with Life is Good and a stick figure with a beret on and a big smile. They, you know, fast forward, it becomes $100 million uh, in sales by 2007. But in the meantime, in the beginning, in March of 1995, a Life is Good logo in first in February of 1995, they applied for a trademark, which was rejected. And that was a, a text only, just the words Life is Good. They also, in March of 19, 1995, filed a Life is Good logo application. That one did not become a trademark. They actually abandoned that. Um, I think because they had other trademarks. I can't see the records from that far back in the trademark office, so I don't know exactly what happened other than when it was filed and when it was abandoned and rejected. In March of 1996, another trademark was filed, and this one finally became a trademark. I don't know the exact reasons the first two were rejected, but it's common for clothing brands to be rejected because of how they use the brand. In this this episode has video content, but video will not be required to understand what I'm presenting. If you want to see the video, find my podcast, Leveraging Inspiration, on YouTube and look for episode 51. So we're presenting here how to use brands on t-shirt designs. Now, there are different types of intellectual property. There's Patent, you want to mark it as patent pending. Trademarks, you mark it with a circle R when it's registered or TM. Copyrights, you mark with a circle C. And trade secrets, you have contracts and you mark things confidential. Now, a protection for a t-shirt design, if you start out and you've got a great design, you keep it confidential initially. You can copyright a logo or a design, but really your main protection that most people are looking for is trademark. Now, I've got an example t-shirt design here. It's a logo. It's it's a black and white image of a duck with two borders and the words, I love ducks. And I've got it up on a t-shirt. It's a bright yellow t-shirt. It's safety yellow because this brand is all about that we love ducks. We don't want to shoot them. We want to watch them. And so the first thing that happens to some people is they they submit to the trademark office saying, oh, yes, I'm using this brand. Here's my example. And they have a mock-up, which you can go online. I've got an image here from Custom Inc. where I've made the brand and it's digitally put on a T-shirt. It makes it look like somebody's wearing the T-shirt, but it's really just a mock-up. And the trademark office will spot that quickly and say, uh, no. You haven't actually produced this, which is a requirement for trademark registration. And you can apply in a way before you've used it, but you have to apply with that form. And so if you apply for the form saying, oh, yes, I'm using it, and show a digital mock-up where you haven't produced the product, you haven't sold any, that's not going to work out for you. Now, as you saw on the shirt, the logo says, I love ducks, but it was on the shirt. So the trademark office requires you to use it as a trademark. If it's just on the shirt 
And I don't know exactly what happened in the life is good case, but there's a possibility that they said, here's our brand, life is good. And they they showed a t-shirt with life is good on the front. Well, that isn't what works in the trademark office. You need to show them that it's a label. The label is where the brand is, whether it's a hang tag. So I've produced here a mock-up of a hang tag where it's the brand is I love ducks and it's got the duck logo. And then the I came up with a fictitious company called the Calm Pond Company. That's right, the Calm Pond Company. You have to say it slow because that's part of the brand. And address of 123 Main Street, Anywhere USA. So by having the logo on a tag, that indicates to people this is a brand. You're, And it's more than just you're buying a shirt that says, I love ducks. You're buying from the brand of I Love Ducks, owned by the Paul, the Calm Pond Company. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. Maybe not the best brand. Anyways, they need evidence of actual trademark use on an actual product. So when you order your t-shirts, order hang tags. Order something that you attach to it or packaging. That's where the trademark office wants to see your logo is in terms of who is offering it. And it can both be what's on the shirt and who is offering it. But if it's only what's on the shirt, they're likely to reject it as that's not a, you're selling a shirt with the design. What you're selling is the design, not it's a brand that you sell with shirts that have designs on them. So one of the ways I've, I've made some mock-ups and I've included in the, the Creative Commons license because I've, I've got some photos from Creative Commons. And so I've got a mock-up of the t-shirt where it's got the I Love Ducks logo small and it's got a picture of a duck on the shirt. And here's another one with another duck. And so these would be examples where it wouldn't just be the one t-shirt. You could show multiple t-shirts. And of course, you actually need to produce these if you are showing them as evidence in the trademark office that you are selling these. Um, here's another one, rutting duck. Uh, so I, you know, I did, these are all mock-ups and I made this, but these are examples where you could have a line of t-shirts that all have the logo as a brand, which might be where I put it above the image, just below the neckline, or it could be on the shoulder. That's common for a brand. And so in places where people see it as a brand, here's another duck and another duck and more baby ducks on a log. So I, that's my example of lots of ducks, flying ducks, cold ducks, rubber ducks. And so that was the my brand that we have created this pretend brand to show how the trademark office wants to see that it's not just a design that you're selling. You're actually selling a brand. One of the other things that helps with this, and the Life is Good brand has now gone beyond just t-shirts and if you show that it's also sold on other things that can help but once again if it's the wording you know people might want to buy a mug and a t-shirt that says life is good it still doesn't indicate that they're buying the brand life is good unless it's on the packaging indicating it's a brand or a website indicating it's a brand. And so if you have questions about, are you using it as a brand? I can help you with that in a one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation where I can look at your case specifically. So I came up with this pretend case so that we can discuss it and I can discuss something that's not confidential because I made this up. It's, it's pretend. And that's, 
getting specific advice on your trademark is is very valuable. Understanding what are the ways that maybe you don't have it right. And we, I like to give advice beyond just, um, okay, I'll file this for you. But there's the questions of how are you using it? How are you going to be better protect your brand? What are the things you don't want to do? Um, one of the other things that happens, and I did find one rejection on, which is common, on one of the Life is Good files that I could see the trademark office, is that if there's any slight discrepancy between what you show on your evidence of use, you submit a picture or um, you know a picture of the shirt with the hang tag on it, or you submit a copy of a website showing it. Um, if it's a product that you're selling, you need to submit evidence of the product itself. Um, either a website where somebody can click through and buy, not just not just advertising, or the product itself, a picture of it in person. If it's a service, you can show the advertising of the service. But for a product, you need to show the product with the brand. So if there's any difference between if it's a logo, a logo that you submitted and the logo that you're using on your packaging or your hang tag, there's any difference, a different period, a different hyphen, a different font um, could be a rejection from the trademark office saying, that's not what you applied for. <laughs> so those are some of the things that we we look for and work to prevent as best we can in helping clients that are filing for trademarks. And we hope this is helpful. We love to help small businesses. Those are the businesses that often make mistakes. And the small businesses, those mistakes are harder to overcome sometimes. A large company may be able to, you know, losing a couple thousand dollars on a mistake for a large company may seem very minimal, but for a small company, that can be a really big deal. Thank you for joining me. I'm Wayne Carroll, and this is Leveraging Inspiration.